God bless you, loved ones. Welcome to the Word with Chester. Today we'll begin study in the 14th chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians. I am grateful for all of you that are logging on. I thank you so much. I want you to know that I love you with the love of the Lord. To all of you that are newcomers, if you would like to go to our archive sessions, you uh, certainly may do so. Uh, we have them archived all the way back to the beginning. Uh, you can get there through my website if you desire, www.poemsbychester.com. Click on the word with Chester and it will take you to our uh, YouTube channel and you can go to the archives and listen up to where we are now. We started with the Gospel of St. Matthew chapter 1 and we have now progressed uh, to the 14th chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians. I ask that you pray for this ministry that God will get the glory and that he will word my mouth and we uh, will be able to reach many people with the word of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Shall we begin our study today in verse 1, chapter 14. The Bible reads, Follow after love, and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. Now, uh, get in my, keep in mind that this is a continuation uh, of what we have studied in our past studies. Uh, verse 13, Apostle Paul let them know that though I spoke, speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not charity, it's just like sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. In other words, we're just making sound. And Apostle Paul is dealing with this, this issue uh, in the Corinthian church because they had uh, went off on tangents. So if whatever you, however you want to word it, Apostle Paul needed to, uh, to correct this matter uh, all speaking in tongues but no real edification and many times we get caught up in the, the uh, gifts of the spirit and we desire them and and, and uh, uh, but yet you have to understand that the Holy Spirit uh, is a is an intelligent being the the most intelligent being in this world in the in the universe in the world or anywhere he is the spirit of god so you have to understand that the holy spirit is intelligent and uh, when the holy spirit works through us uh through us we have to understand that that intelligence worked through us as well and apostle paul through the 13th chapter uh letting them know that uh whatever you do if it does not come with love uh, uh, you ha you have to know that it is really nothing it's not of god if it's not coupled with love or, or you are not in, in the learned of what God would have you know if you don't couple it with love. Well, shall we continue? Follow after love and desire spiritual gifts. Nothing wrong with desiring spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. Now, Apostle Paul is going to explain this himself, so shall we continue reading in verse 2. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him. However, in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries. Now get that. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue uh, speaketh not to men, but to God. Uh, in the Spirit you speaketh mysteries. Uh, uh, even things that you don't know and uh, don't understand. When the, when the Holy Spirit is using you in that gift, uh, you speak mysteries. Things that, that have not been done. Uh, been uttered of uh, things that have not been known. Uh, well, shall we continue reading verse 3? But he that prophesies speaketh unto men uh, to edification and exhortation uh, and comfort. Uh, well, can you see the differences? Uh, one that speaks in, in, in an unknown tongue speaks to God uh, and uh, uh, he speaks mysteries. Uh, he doesn't speak to men, but he speaks to God and understand uh, understandeth him. Uh, however, in the spirit, he speaketh mysteries, but he that prophesies speaketh unto men to edification. Uh, why? When you prophesy, people can understand what you're saying. In an unknown tongue, except there be an interpretation, they don't know what you're saying. So how can they be edified through that? Uh, but he that prophesies speaketh unto men to edification uh, and ex exhortation and comfort. Uh, Verse 4, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue uh, edifieth himself. Nothing wrong with edifying yourself. Nothing wrong with speaking in tongue. But he that speaketh in an unknown, unknown tongue edifieth himself. But he that prophesies edifieth the church. Uh, what are we saying? Uh, when people can understand what you're saying, uh, you can be an edification to them. Or you can exhort them or comfort them uh, because they understand what you're saying. If you're speaking in an unknown tongue and they don't know what you're 
you're talking about, how can you edify them? How can they be blessed through what uh, they hear you, you saying? Verse 5, I would that ye all spoke with tongues. Apostle Paul is letting them know, I'm not knocking and I'm not telling you not to speak in tongues. I want you to pray in the Spirit. I want you to speak uh, in tongues. I want you to do this. But rather that ye prophesy, uh, for greater is he that prophesies than he that speaketh, in, speaketh with tongues. Uh, well, the most important thing in the church now is for you to speak where people can understand you uh, because then they can receive edification from it. Uh, I would that ye all spoke with tongues, but rather that ye may prophesy, for greater is he that prophesies than he that speaketh with tongues, except uh, he interpret. That's a, that's a key point there. Except you interpret that the church may receive edifying. It's important when tongues go for, uh, uh, forth, I'm talking about in the body of Christ. Uh, now, you have prayer times on your own and uh, uh, to yourself. Um, if the Holy Spirit moves on you and you speak in an unknown tongue, uh, you are edifying yourself. There's nothing wrong with praying in the Spirit. Uh, but we're talking about in the church now, when we are assembled together, if all is speaking in tongues, there's no real edification huh? because we don't understand or the average person or the people around you won't understand what you're saying. Shall we continue reading? Now, brethren, if I come to you uh, speaking with tongues, uh, that uh, what shall I profit you? Except I shall speak to you either by revelation. I, I haven't profited you, profited you anything. Uh, if I speak to you in a language that you know nothing about, uh, you haven't received anything from it, uh, uh, except now uh, I shall speak to you either by revelation or it is revealed to you, uh, God opens up the utterance to you. Uh, well, uh, uh, by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine. Uh, those are question marks. By uh, and There's a question mark after that. Uh, what uh, 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 I shall speak to you either uh, by revelation or by, by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine. Uh, can you understand? Uh, 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 speaking in tongues, and Apostle Paul is not saying it's wrong. He's not saying that they should not speak in tongues. Uh, but he's letting them know in the assembly, in the body, uh, when people have come together, uh, how are they going to receive edification unless you speak to where they can understand it uh, or give an interpretation uh, of what's being said. So that they can be edified. In verse 7, and even things without life giving sound, whether flute or harp, except they give a distinction in the sound, how shall it be known what is piped or harped? Thank God. This is a great illustration. You have to understand. Harps, we're talking about musical instruments now. Flutes and trumpets and trombones and tubas and all of these things. They all have a distinctive sound. But if they all, uh, the, the conductor doesn't get up there and just say, y'all play, just play anything. Uh, you got to understand how, how chaotic that would be if everybody just, uh, every instrument just sounded anything they want to sound. Uh, but when they play, when they play on key or play when they're assigned to play, uh, can you understand what beautiful music that they will make or can make because they are organized uh, and they're playing and their sound is, is, is distinct, uh, but adding to the music instead of add, uh, taking away from it in a chaotic sound. Uh, verse 8 reads, uh, For if the trumpet give an, an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to battle? Can you understand it? That trumpet has a certain sound, and those that uh, uh, that are ready or, or been, been prepared to go to battle, when they hear that trumpet, they know that trumpet. Uh, it can't give any other sound, or the, otherwise the men would not know what was happening. But that trumpet uh, has been assigned and put in place uh, when they hear that trumpet to get ready, ready for battle. Verse 9, so likewise ye, except ye utter by the tongue, tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak into the air. 
talking about speaking tongues, uh, speaking in tongues. If, if I'm talking about in the assembly where where you got people there that uh, uh, that uh, 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 maybe uh, can't interpret or don't understand what you're saying, you're not edifying them by speaking in an unknown tongue. You may be doing something for yourself, you may be edifying yourself, but to the body or the assembly that you're in, you're not ever edifying them. It's like you're speaking into the air. Verse 10. There are, uh, it may be, it may be so many kinds of voices in the world, uh, and none of them is without uh, signification. Uh, everyone has their stink, distinct voice. Uh, by now, <coughs> please excuse me, those of you that have been listening to me uh, uh, the, the past year and a half, uh, you pretty much know what I sound like. Uh, and if you hear me, even if, when you can't see my face, you will know that is my voice. Uh, well, that's the same uh, uh, what Apostle Paul is talking about here. There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, uh, and none of them is without signification. Uh, you have your own voice. Uh, if you build a relationship with me, uh, I will be able to know your voice from the other voices that are all around. Uh, when I hear you, I know it. Uh, when I hear uh, one of my family members, I know that voice, and all of them have a distinct voice, uh, so all I have to, all they have to do is say words. I don't have to be looking at them, uh, and I'll know which one it is. Uh, well, this is what Apostle Paul is talking about. Uh, in verse 11, it reads, Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, uh, I, shall, uh, I shall be unto him that speaketh uh, a barbarian, and he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. Uh, in other words, we'll be a strange people to each other. When you speak something I can't understand, you're just like a barbarian to me. I don't understand what you're saying. And vice versa. You, if you can't understand me, I'm like a barbarian to you. Shall we read verse 12? Even so ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may, may excel to the edifying of the church. What is he saying? The important thing for you to do is do what it takes to edify the church. And he's going to talk about speaking in an unknown tongue and, and, and interpreting and all all these things are important, but the key thing is edifying the body, uh, edifying the people that are around you so they can understand what you are saying. In verse 13, it reads, Wherefore, let him that speak in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. Uh, if this is what the gift that God is dealing with you in, Apostle Paul says, pray that you may interpret. Uh, verse 14, For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, uh, but my understanding is unfruitful. Uh, when you pray in an unknown tongue, your spirit prayeth. You're edifying yourself. Yes, you're getting something out of it. Uh, you're getting something out of it, but those that are around you, you're not getting anything from it. In verse 15, uh, what is it then? Uh, I pray with the Spirit, uh, and I pray with an understanding also. Uh, I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with an understanding also. Uh, can you understand what Apostle Paul is doing in letting them know? Uh, if you pray in the Spirit, pray also uh, uh, where, where you can be understand, understood. Uh, pray in the Spirit, that's good. Uh, but pray uh, uh, where they can also be understanding of people will know what you're saying. Well, shall we continue reading? Verse 16, Else when thou shalt bless with the Spirit, how shall he that occupieth the place uh, of the unlearned say amen? Uh, when the Spirit is moving on you, if he doesn't understand what you're saying or what you're doing, how in the world is he going to say amen uh, at the giving of thanks? Uh, seeing he understandeth not what thou sayest. Can you see, uh, can you understand how important it is for when you are with the body of Christ uh, or when you are in the assembly uh, to do the things you do and, and say the things you say, uh, even when the Spirit is on you to edify the body or to lift the body of Christ uh, and not to not for them to just have to guess what's going on, but say the words uh, so they will understand so that they can be edified uh, through you. It's all right to speak in the Spirit, uh, but also pray with an understanding also. Uh, do what you do uh, so that the body can be edified. Verse 17, uh, For thou verily givest thanks well, uh, 
but the other is not edified. It's all right for you to praise the Lord, uh, but praise him uh, also so others can be edified through it as well. Uh, I thank my God, I speak with tongues more than ye all, Apostle Paul is saying in verse 18. I speak in tongues more than all of you. Uh, well, he's not knocking tongues. He's not telling you it's wrong to speak in tongues. Uh, otherwise, he wouldn't say, I do it. Uh, I thank God, I speak with tongues more than you all. Uh, verse 19, uh, yet in the church, I had rather speak five words uh, my, uh, with my understanding uh, that by my voice I might teach others also uh, than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Can you understand what he's saying? I would rather speak five words with an understanding uh, so you can understand what I am saying and you can be encouraged, you can be lifted, uh, you can receive the joy you need. Uh, I'd rather speak so you can understand me uh, than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Uh, verse 20, uh, brethren, be not children in understanding, uh, however, uh, in malice be ye children, uh, but in understanding be men. Uh, be not children in understanding. Uh, have your mind set to where you understand, uh, and what you do, let it be understood. Be not children in understanding, uh, however, in malice be children. What is he talking about? Uh, be children in malice. Uh, if someone wrongs you, uh, well, you have to watch children. Um, they, they can be fighting one minute and then after the uh, next five minutes they're back playing again. Uh, well, uh, we can have misunderstanding in the church, church as well, but we ought to have a forgiving spirit like that child and, and not grow up hate and start uh, start uh, 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 I'm trying to get the right word start start uh, feuds and things of that na nature like the Hatfields and the McCoys. Uh, we shouldn't be that way. We should have a forgiving nature. Uh, even if we wrong someone, uh, we should be able to forgive them and go on with our lives uh, and continue to love one another. Uh, brethren, be not children in understanding. Understand uh, how to do things and understand truth. Uh, however, in malice be ye children, uh, but in understanding be men. Think like men. Uh, carry yourself like a man and and, and uh, uh, handle situations like a man. Verse 21, uh, in the law it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. That is writ wrote in the, in the word of God. Uh, and yet uh, for all that will, will uh, uh, they not hear me? Uh, and yet for all that will they, uh, let me read that right, uh, uh, Will I speak unto this people, uh, and yet all that will, they not hear me? All that will, they not hear me? I'm reading it right. Saith the Lord. i got to read it again. Uh, in the law it is written, uh, with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak to this people. Uh, and yet for all that will, uh, they not hear me? Will they not hear me? saith the Lord, uh, you got to understand, uh, God said he's going to speak in a certain manner. Uh, and, and and if you you, you uh, uh, analyze the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came, they spoke in language uh, to where people that didn't speak that language would understand uh, or didn't speak their language would understand. So get the complete picture about tongues. There is an important part in the church for tongues and, and they are real uh, and you don't knock people who speak in tongues. But you have to have the mindset that what I say should be an edification to the body. They have to understand me, otherwise I'm not doing any good for them. I have to interpret what I say or say something that's going to be understandable by them for me to edify them. Shall we read on in the Bible? Verse 22 reads, uh, verse 22 reads, Wherefore, tongues are for a sign, uh, not to them that believe. Important verse. Uh, Wherefore, tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, uh, but to them that believe not. Uh, get what tongues are for. Uh, read uh, uh, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, uh, when they spoke in a, uh, in a language unknown to themselves. Uh, the men that were around them, uh, they were speaking in their language because they were men that came out of every nation there. Uh, and they heard them speak in their own language. Uh, so understand really uh, what the Word of God is doing. Uh, uh, when tongues go forth, uh, you're supposed to be an edification to someone. Uh, somebody should be blessed 
uh, in what's going on. Uh, in an unknown tongue, uh, you're speaking in a spirit, you're speaking mysteries, uh, and you're edifying yourself. But those that are listening, uh, they're not edified by you when you speak in an unknown tongue. Uh, but prophesying uh, serves not for them that believe not, but for them who believe. Uh, when you prophesy, you ed edify the ones that hear. Uh, they can hear you, they can understand, and they can glean by what you have said. Uh, tongues are important, and I don't, but I don't downplay tongues. Uh, I have spoken tongues myself, uh, but you have to understand the Holy Spirit is intelligent. Uh, it does things in an intelligent way. Uh, if you're just rattling off and just yeah, 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 and not uh, not edifying the ones around you, you're just uh, just like a, a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal, especially when there's no love there. What the love will do when it's connected to the tongue speaking and everything else in the in the uh, gifts of the spirit uh, is connected to love to where you want to help people. You want to edify them uh, and not leave them wondering what's going on. Uh, you want to speak in a language that they're going to understand. Uh, you got to understand the Holy Spirit is intelligent uh, and he's going to have you do uh, intelligent things uh, so that you can be an edification uh, to those that are looking on. Uh, we will talk about this further in our next session. Uh, I want you to know I love you, my friends. Uh, I love you with the love of the Lord. Uh, if you would like to contact me for any reason, uh, you can write me at the Word with Chester Ministries, uh, Post Office Box 200483, uh, San Antonio, Texas, uh, 78220. Uh, you can also contact me at my website, uh, www.poemsbychester.com. Dot com. Uh, remember, I love you, my friends. Uh, I love you with the love of the Lord. God bless you.